second. Here's the uh, here's the shaft. Here's the box of the shaft of the opening, and then here is handsaw from Brian of Bearcat Wood that we'll be looking at as well. Let me just make sure this is actually working here. Oh look, it is working. That's good. Thank you, thank you, internet, for actually working for once. All right. So once again, I couldn't get the fancy live streaming thing set up, so we're using the less fancy one again. So I don't really have control over the quality or much of anything. It's pretty much just a point the camera and go kind of thing. So, okay. So this here is the drive shaft for the bandsaw mill. This came from my buddy Ray, made this for me. So looking forward to opening that thing. It is pretty ridiculously heavy. I think it's like 26 pounds or something like that. Feels pretty dense. And then a nice hand saw from Brian that we're looking at as well. Quality's good. Excellent. All right, let's, let's uh, pan down a little bit and we'll do a little box opening action here. Look at that, zoom and everything. Okay. <laughs> I am I'm not really tense, just uh, I've had a headache all day. I don't get headaches very often, so when I do, it's usually pretty bad. Uh. Uh. So, of course, I didn't do any of this stuff beforehand, so I've always... This bottom is stapled on, so I gotta undo all these staples. All right, pull these staples out of here. It is kind of like Christmas. So what's everybody doing? It is. It has been crazy warm here. It's like it's probably like sixty degrees right now. It's nice. I'm not tearing into a Casey Neistat style. I have too much on the line here. I do not want to. Although it'd be very hard to break this, I don't want to harm it in any way. <laughs> I'm not going to throw it across the room. <laughs> JR might show up at some point. Him and his nanny went out and did, to do something. Get out of the house. These are just... Uh, uh, Cobalt or the Lowe's branded vice grip. So I couldn't find my needle nose pliers. All right. Now how do you get this out? Twist and pull. Wow. So let's turn it this way. Oh, wow. What kind of box is this? This is crazy. Ugh, there we go. There we go. That's off. My snap rings. <laughs> you can't see my face, so I'm pretty excited.
There we go. Oh, this is not light. <laughs> that is beautiful. Wow. Ray did an amazing job on this thing. Look at this. Squirrels are running around back there. It's a lot of threads. <laughs> wow. That is just incredible. Wow. This this will work. <laughs> Let me get some close-ups for you. Look at the size of those nuts. Don't roll away, please. <laughs> Look at this thing. Ridiculous. So, um, let's see. Ray made this castle nut for me because he couldn't find an inch and three eighths castle nut. So he machined this out of a regular nut for me so I wouldn't have to go all ghetto and make my own with an angle grinder. <laughs> so he made that for the pulley side, and then I have an actual two inch castle nut for the drive uh, wheel side. So the grooves in the center area are for snap rings. So there's going to be three bearings. So the bearing spaces are here, here, and here. And there's snap rings just to retain the shaft to keep it from sliding in and out. Uh, no reason for the thread pitch. Just kind of what we use based on the nuts that were available. I have small hands, so that's a two-inch cast nut in my three-inch hand. Crazy. Uh, three bearings, not two? Well, why not? That was kind of my thought was, you know, why not add another bearing in the middle uh, just to help stiffen the shaft, keep it from deflecting? Probably unnecessary, but... You know, the bearings are like forty dollars, so I figured why not add another one? Plus, it gives a little that gives you two more points of uh, mounting contact to the plate. So, in theory, this should help stiffen the mounting a little better as well as the tension from the blade tries to twist the shaft in the uh, on the mounting plate. So, I got snap rings here. I got the castle nuts. I got all that stuff. So, the last thing I have to do now, which I'll do later, is to see if the um, the bearings fit on the shaft correctly, which they should. All right, so that's that. Uh, hopefully, well, the completed is kind of a a loose term for it as far as when it's going to be completed. Uh, completed in the sense that I'll be actually having a blade on there and cutting stuff probably the end of next week, I'd say, if everything goes. Uh, smoothly ish backs up again well, I'm glad it's working that is 40 the uh, the grade on the shaft is 40 I'm sorry I'm not really good with metal stuff yet 4140 heat treated, I think. This is what the shaft's made of. If you go and you go into my shop update for this past week, there's a link to Ray's video that shows some machining the shaft and making it in case you want to see it being made. Dude, have you seen how many logs I have here, Jordan? I don't think I need to bring any more logs right away. Let me just catch up on my stuff first. <laughs> Hey, Brian, you, uh, you're actually here to see this. So this probably is uh, very familiar to you, Brian. You can see Brian in the comments there, Bearcat Wood. Check out his YouTube channel and his stuff and all that because he's awesome. He made this beautiful saw for me. 
unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of things I can do with the audio on this. So, uh, I don't know. I'm recording this, so in theory, I'll post the recorded version from my camera, so the playback version won't have any kind of delay. Look at this. All these fancy card scrapers. Should we open this first or the saw first? Ah, uh, I don't know. Let's do this first. I don't want to cut your sticker, Brian. Oh, no. Though I have, like, a bunch of these already. Check that out. Is that a sweet scraper or what? Think of all the crazy stuff you could scrape with this. This just looks comfortable too. It's got a good feel to it. So, there we go. All different radiuses. This is specifically, Brian makes these for chair scraping or for scraping, scraping for chair parts, but you could use this for anything. And I, I'm really excited about this profile here because I think that's gonna be great for cleaning up some moldings. <laughs> All right. Check this out. Ho, 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 ho. What do we think about that? What do we think, everybody? Can Brian make a saw or what? Isn't that incredible? Oh, stuck. Got some packing materials on there. Look at this. How beautiful is that? Look at the shaping on the back. It's so smooth. Look at that. Let me get a little closer here. Look at that handle. Focus. There we go. Look at that handle figure on that is beautiful. I'm trying to show the camera as best as I can. There we go. I don't know if I can use this. It's too pretty. Just kidding. I use everything. <laughs> it's an incredibly nice fit too. Look at that. Back this up a little bit. Beautiful. <laughs> cut. I'm gonna just cut into the table real quick. See how well it cuts. Uh, it feels like it would cut very well. Uh, I'm looking forward to using this, Brian. Thank you so much. You do amazing work. Yeah, that's amazing. Kind of have to cut something now. All right, just a second. Plywood. What do you think? <laughs> Let's see, here's my hand. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It actually cuts. <laughs> it cuts really nice. <laughs> really nicely. Nice. Cuts. Look at that clean it is on plywood. 
Very nice. Woo. I'm pretty excited now. Two things going on at once. A sweet handsaw and a sweet shaft. <laughs> So that's uh that's about it, I guess. Um, I got everything unboxed. This is gonna be ridiculous, though. Ah, ah. <laughs> so yeah, I'll be doing that in a few days, getting that mounted on the the mill, getting the drive wheel mounted, and coming along. I got the whole carriage painted uh, this week. The last coat of paint went on this afternoon, so when that's dry. Put the beam back on there and carry on. <laughs> Gotta use it on something good. All right. I don't know if there's any questions or anything. I could answer anything like that, or we can call it a show. That was fun. The drive shaft weighs 20, shipping weight on the drive shaft was 26 pounds. So. Probably weighs around 25 pounds or so. Uh, I mean, by, by the time you get the bearings on there um, and the pulley and the drive wheel, it's going to be probably close to 150 pounds. Yeah, the bearings. But the bearings is going to be pretty darn heavy. Those castle nuts aren't light either. The cider is off with Steve. He is doing the fermenting on that since he's kind of like the expert. Well, compared to me, he's an expert. Uh, so he's doing that. So I'm not sure how long that takes, to be honest, because I know nothing about apple stuff. So maybe it's almost done. I don't know. How long does it take to ferment apple juice? A month? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I can try the bearing fit. I'll get the bearings. Let me go grab one. We'll see if they fit. When um, when Ray was doing this, since I didn't actually send him the bearings, he went for a slightly tighter tolerance, so these might not fit. Um, just sliding them on. I might have to actually tap them on or something. Let me get uh, something to protect my beautiful table. The shaft is 4140 HT. Ugh. Oh, nice. Oh. All right, there's one bearing. The other ones are in the car. Nice, that fits nicely. Look at that. You can't see this, can you? I just screwed that one up. <laughs> oh, man, I'm having one of those days. So there we go. Bearing is that's one of the bearings. And then there's two more like this that go on either side. Those are out in the car. They're in the truck. They're at Dima's. I picked them up today. That is pretty cool. I can do it again if you guys want. Oh boy. Yeah. Perfect. Ah, bearings are on. There's not much to look at on the sawmill. It's basically just taken apart from what you've seen before. There is really not a whole lot going on over there. I can show you. What's up, Dad? I can show you my nut holder. 
made these yesterday. These are to hold the Acme nuts for the lift and lower mechanism so that I don't have to weld the nuts directly to the beam. You can just, they would just push up against this holder thing and this gets bolted to the beam. I designed the mill, did you design the mill from scratch? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I looked at a lot of stuff and decided what I liked and what I didn't and made it up. I'm still making it up. <laughs> but yeah. Woo! Pretty big. So I think that is about it for new stuff on the mill, I think. Um, as soon as I get the paint done, the beam goes back on, and then um, not a whole lot going on there. We get the motor mounted, get the drive shaft mounted, uh, finish the raise and lower mechanism, find some way to hold a log down to the bed, and then it's uh, cutting time. Oh, there we go. What kind of motor am I going to be using? I have a 10 horsepower electric motor. Will the mill drive itself or you push it? I will push it until I get to the point of adding power feed. Uh, let's see. I have been welding for a little over a year. I've just been practicing in my backyard doing this stuff. And if you're just joining us, boom. Make sure you check out Brian, his YouTube channel, his stuff. Beautiful, beautiful handsaw. He's in the comments there, and I'll post a link to his channel in the description for the recording, as well as a link to Ray's channel for uh, checking out how this was made. Ugh. Very nice. I have not... Um, uh, uncoiled the saw blades yet. That's on my list of things to to do that I'm not really uh, looking forward to at this point. Uh, the motor gets connected to the drive wheel through a pulley and belt drive. So on this side of the shaft, on the small side of the shaft, it would be a 14 inch pulley and that goes through a belt to the motor which has a 5 inch pulley on it. My favorite food, uh, probably uh, pizza is my favorite food, uh, but I do like pancakes too. So I don't know. I'd probably eat pizza every day if I could. Uh, if I wasn't married, I probably would. <laughs> <laughs> do you think 10 horsepower will be enough? I think the larger electric mills have stronger mortars, more towards 20 horsepower. It'll be enough for me. Keep in mind that it is really just, um, uh, it's, it's all relative, I guess. So I'm used to running a chainsaw mill that the mill I have is a seven and a half horsepower gas motor, which is probably about the equivalent of maybe a four, three or four horsepower electric motor. That's taking a quarter inch kerf. Um, so I'm going to a 10 horsepower electric motor that's taking less than a 16th of an inch kerf. So it's going to be cutting a lot faster than what I'm used to. I'm not trying to produce, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of slabs every day or however long it takes to make a thousand slabs. I just want a faster way of doing things. So, you know, if it takes five minutes to make a cut, that's a lot better than 20 minutes. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. How will I track the blade? If you watch my idle wheel video, that I posted last week that shows the tracking mechanism on the idle side. I'll do a very similar thing to the drive side, but the idle side will be tracked to the drive side. I was, I'll just be setting up the tracking mechanism on the drive side so that I can get it kind of close to uh, perpendicular to the saw head beam to give myself a decent starting point. Do, 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 do. All right. Here's a good question. Is the money-saving aspect of having a big sawmill that interests you most, or is it the ability to get some custom wood that's hard to come by? What interests me most is the f just building it. 
I don't have any intention of doing sawing full time um, because then I would not be making videos full time anymore. Um, I'm not looking to make a lot of money from that. It's really just the experience and being able to share that with all of you is why I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah, so basically, I prefer foods that are round and flat. <laughs> Dale have not tried pizza toppings on pancakes uh, at all. James asked, what is the estimated feet per minute of the blade? I am, I've calculated it out to be four and a half thousand feet per minute, which should be the appropriate speed for the size motor I'm using and the blades I'm using and all that stuff. Are you scared to start it for the first time? Um, a little bit. A little scared, a little excited. How much do you predict a bandsaw will cost to produce? Well, when I first started, I was thinking like $5,000. Um, and you could do it for $5,000, but as I got more into it, the further I got into it, I was like, I kind of started splurging on some stuff. Like uh, this shaft, I kind of splurged on that. The uh, guide bearings, I splurged a little bit on that. So it's probably going to be closer to seven, seven to 8000 by the time I'm done. But still, that's a heck of a lot better than buying one because a mill that will cut this size. The cheapest commercially available one you can buy that I know of is the Oscar 60, I think, or Oscar 70, whatever one. The one by Hudson, and it's $43,000. How did I figure the pulley reduction? If you go online to vintagemachinery.org, they have a calculator there for bandsaw specifically to calculate the pulleys, the pulley um, configurations for what exact uh, feet per minute speed you want for the blade. So you enter the feet, the um, you enter the the wheel size of your bandsaw, you enter the drive pulley, you enter the um, the motor pulley, and you enter the the motor speed and they'll give you the actual um, feet per minute for the blade. It's really nice. How are you going to get power to your VFD and motor extension cord? What inspired you to start woodworking and metalworking more important, what pizza toppings do you like slash type of pizza do you like? <laughs> um, I don't know. I got started woodworking in college trying to make something for my girlfriend. And um, I got into metalworking as a side offshoot of woodworking. As I started doing more tree sourcing or log sourcing, I needed ways to move stuff around. So I got the trailer. I built the log arch. And now I'm building a bandsaw mill. So necessity? I guess. <laughs> uh, favorite pizza topping? I don't really care. I like anything on pizza. Um, usually, if I am just getting pizza for whatever, I'll get Little Caesars with pepperoni or something because it's nice and cheap. And that's kind of nice. Um, otherwise, uh, some kind of deep dishes sometimes is nice occasionally too. I don't know. I like it all. You know, I'm a lover of all things pizza. <laughs> The weather here is quite nice for this time of year. For November, it is pretty warm. It's uh, 60, maybe? 65? It's pretty warm. I'm not going to start a channel related to pizza. <laughs> um, I would like to do a live stream of the, of the first uh, use. And hopefully, I can get the actual like fancier live streaming things figured out by then. Otherwise, I'll have to resort to doing this again, which I guess works OK. But I guess sometimes the audio has problems, and I can't control a whole lot. So we'll see. I'll at least do it on Periscope. What safety guards will be adding to the saw? I'll be adding a blade, uh, blade guards or a wheel covers or whatever to the, the wheels and the part of the blade that goes across the bearing. What is my favorite sport? Uh, is woodworking a sport? <laughs> Uh, how long can there, uh, basically how long is, what's the, the cut length on the mill? 13 feet. Uh, 
Uh, when you do urban logging, do you cut down the trees yourself or are they already down and ready to be hauled away? I don't cut them down myself. I get them when they're ready down on the ground. How long it takes some maple slabs that are dried? I cut some this past spring. I think they're nine or ten quarters, so they'll probably be dry next summer. Where we store store all the wood you'll cut on the mill, in the lawn. <laughs> is woodworking your full time job? Sort of. Making these videos is my full time job. I just happen to make videos about woodworking. What do I like about wood or metalworking? Um, I don't know, just the whole idea that I can have something in my mind and then actually make it happen in, in real life. So that's kind of cool. Uh, what do I ask per board foot on the wood? Um, I keep the pricing very simple. It's 325 per board foot. Um, for like live edge slab type stuff, I do. I add a dollar per board foot over um, 18 inches, and then if you start getting over like 10 quarter, add another dollar per board foot. And if I had to buy the log, I'll factor that cost into the uh, the cost of the slabs as well. But I like to keep it pretty reasonable and pretty easy because I it's not that expensive to produce, I guess. Has your wife asked why the bandsaw mill is so large? Yes, that they put the carriage up. <laughs> How will you get the huge logs onto the mill? I'll do that with my trailer. I'll pick them up onto the trailer again. I'll back the trailer up to the end of the mill, and I'll push them off the trailer onto the bed of the mill. Do slabs still dry after left out and rained on? Yes, if you stack them with the offcut on top, it acts as a little roof kind of thing. And it actually dries really quickly out here because there is a ton of airflow from all the wind. Uh, is it actually possible to make a living with 75,000 subscribers? I'm doing it. So I guess so. You got to be somewhat smart about it, I guess. Uh, has Jim been around for a look yet? I, he stopped by when I was in the home once and saw it like two months ago. Uh, I got to get him down here again to take a look at this because I think he's going to like it. Uh, what is my permanent job doing these videos? What portion of your milled wood do you use yourself compared to what you sell? Do you expect your milling output to significantly increase, increase once the new mill is operating? Um, how much do I use myself? Maybe five to ten percent, if that. Not a whole lot. Um, I don't expect it to really increase significantly, uh, because I don't plan to dedicate more time to milling. Uh, I do need a bobcat, but I don't have anywhere to put it. Uh, what are the key YouTubers who you get your inspiration from? Um, I just watch as much as I can from anybody that I find what they're doing interesting and kind of motivates me and inspires me to do my own thing. Uh, what's up, Jeremiah? What did you do for work before YouTube slash woodworking? I did software design and product management. Do, do, do. Superman. 009, where do you get the bandsaw wheels and for how much? I got them from Cook's Saw and they were 600 a piece. Uh, do you have problems with oil and metal shavings contaminating your woodworking projects? Um, no, I keep that to like the, I guess the side of the shop or the side over there by the jointer where I don't really have like finished work pieces ever. So it's not really a problem for me. And then I just clean up when I'm about to start doing some woodworking. <laughs> Best thing to do in Minnesota on a Thursday night? Uh, I don't know. Usually I'm outside. If it's this nice out, I'm outside on, in November. 
get out, walk around down there. I think you'll, you'll find something down. You're downtown, right? I think you'll have plenty of things to do down there. Uh, do, do, do. From Ken, when do you think the first run of the mill will be? Thanks for the videos. I really enjoy them. Thanks, Ken. Um, hopefully next weekend. Uh, if I can get everything uh, finalized during the week next week, I should be able to cut something next weekend. And um, it'll be interesting because I won't have my blade guards by then. So I could wait until I install those, but I won't. Thanks, Gareth. Glad you were able to stop by. Yes, Scott. Um, George Fandriska stopped by uh, like two weeks ago when April and Triton were here just to say hi and check out the shop. Um, he He's about an hour away from me, so he came by. He's been meaning to come by and check out my place. I've meaning to go out there and check out his place. I still haven't done that yet. Uh, will you miss running the chainsaw mill? No, because I'll still be doing it. Do you have a woodworking project you'd like to do? Um, not particularly. Anything at this point, this is starting to drag. The, uh, the bandsaw mill build is definitely starting to drag. Are you eventually planning on getting further into metalworking? Uh, you probably. I think you'll see me getting into machining. Because, yeah, <laughs> this sounds interesting at this point. Uh, do, 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 do. Dude, this is scrolling. You guys are crazy. There's a lot of people here today. Uh, well, we see more videos with furniture for your kids, or your kid while he grows up. Yes, I have to make him a bed now, and I'm sure I have to make something else as well. Hey, my mom's on this. What's up, mom? Lindsay is doing well. And it'd be interesting with two babies here. Ah, scrolling. Hey, Fred. <laughs> uh, I have considered making my own maple syrup. I do have a few maple trees in the backyard, but every year when, I, when it's uh, tapping season, I always forget. So maybe this year I'll set a reminder to actually tap them. <laughs> <laughs> what type of software did I build? Um, our company did a medical record software, and I did all of the product design, um, the specs, and all the preliminary stuff so the developers could actually um, get the product right the first time. So I was like the intermediary between the users and the developers, and it was, it was actually a really fun job. What is on your arm? I hope it's not an injury. Uh, paint. Lots of paint. I got a little messier with the paint job this time. <laughs> hey, Ron. Thanks. Yeah, I watched ClickSpring. That's kind of one of the things that uh, pushed me into it, for sure. Uh, what does my wife think about all the logs laying around on the woodworking? Um, she knew what she was getting into when we got married, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she just tolerates it. I don't know. Where do you live? I am in Minneapolis. What's up, Douglas? You're here. Do you recommend a domino? If not, what's the best way to make a tabletop? Domino is an amazing piece of machinery. I don't use mine nearly enough because it's not that exciting as far as um, showing it in videos. So I usually do things more old school with integral Morris and tenon. But the domino can definitely speed things up and make things a lot easier. For making a tabletop, though, you don't really need dominoes or anything. You just glue the boards together and it's plenty strong. Um, I don't usually use any alignment aids in my tabletops or my panel glue-ups. 
Will you do more collaborations with other YouTubers? Uh, yeah, I hope so. When the opportunity presents itself, I definitely will. It's a lot more fun and interesting if we're both in the same location at the same time. From Robin, I used your video on scrapers, but it kills my thumbs. Any tips? Um, if you can put less of a bend in the scraper as you're using it, that can definitely help. Otherwise, tougher thumbs. Uh, card scraping in itself is a really demanding uh, task on your actual like gripping muscles and fingers. So you can either try putting less, less flex in the scraper itself, or you could try a scraper holder. Um, I haven't tried the holders before, but I, because I just really like being able to vary the flex as I work. But you could just be pushing too hard. Uh, Jeremiah, why did you upgrade your table saw to a saw stop? Safety. Um, this, the table saw upgrade was something that I've been wanting to, or it's been on my upgrade list for a long time, but a lower priority one. Um, but the real answer is product placement. That was placed there by SawStop. Do I watch Keith Rucker? Yes, I do enjoy his videos. Sorry, this thing skipped down again. Uh, all right, here we go. What do my neighbors think of the logs and the mill? They're Excited for the mill to come to life. Um, I don't know specifically of any channels that are woodworking in Swedish minimalist furniture focused. That sounds pretty cool, though. Will you do more collaborations with local YouTubers? Coming from a local YouTuber. Sure, Jake. Come on over. We'll do a, we'll do a collab. I don't have a problem with that. That sounds fun. What kind of welding am I doing? I am doing uh, stick welding or arc welding. What will power the bandsaw from end to end across the log? It'll be manually pushed for now, and then eventually I'll put a power feed on it or some kind of power-assisted feed. Can I make more cutting boards? Sure. I don't really have time to do that right now, though. Hey, Mike. Uh, we were just, I was actually just talking about this with Andy Klein last night uh, for the Barker attachment to the mill. So yes, because on the raised lower motor, it's got that giant stack of cutters on it right now. I already have a cutting wheel, a carbide wheel, basically like a thick kerf uh, table saw blade kind of that I can use for a debarker. So eventually, yeah, I'll build, uh, build a debarker and put it on the mill. <laughs> Douglas says, can you talk about the deer, or is it a secret? If you follow my Instagram stories, uh, on Tuesday, I came home, got out of my truck, and turned to my left, and there was a deer head in my neighbor's uh, flower garden. Um, he got a deer a couple nights beforehand, and that's where he left the head. Have you given any of your neighbor's cutting boards? Yes, I have. Did I consider a circular saw? I'm assuming for the sawmill. Um, no, I get technically yes, but I need a much bigger cut width than a circular blade would do. Oh, Mac was talking about the baby's babies. Oh, child and my babies. All of the things that are going on right now, all the new additions around the home. Ah, odd number of bearings is a good thing. I just stumbled upon that one, apparently. All right. I think 
I don't know if anyone's had any questions otherwise. We can call it. Hopefully this worked out all right. Hope you guys have fun and enjoyed this quick uh, little thing. Maybe we'll do more of these in the future if everybody likes these. We shall see. Definitely a fun thing to do. But uh, I'm going to go and find something to do. Put this away. Ha! Ha! <laughs> ah, all right. Well, have a fantastic evening, everyone, and I'll see you later. If I can figure out how to stop this thing. How do I stop this? Well, here it is. Like I said, not easy.